you that enjoy a conventional news program, this might not be your news program. On Halloween and on April Fool's Day, Sam I.B., your humble host, lets you all remember that he is in fact an entertainer. So, if you want your news, your factual news, but if you'd like a little bit of entertainment, welcome to the April Fool's edition. All of the news that I'm about to give you is real news, but it's given to you by people that never existed, but could have. Hey, I'm, it's like, how do you shut these off, man? It's like... Welcome yeah. back, buddy. Uh, you're, oh, you're supposed to fade that out, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. uh, there you he doesn't do anything. Oh, you did fine. Okay, fine. hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? It's Buddy Puff. Uh, it's, t- <coughs> it's, t- <coughs> it's tobacco. For, for those of you that don't know, I did the uh, update on uh, last Halloween, man, and it was it was freaking awesome. So, uh, I guess I'm, I got promoted. I got my own channel now, Christelle. It's so awesome. Hey, hey, hey buddy, since you've been promoted, you know, how, how many subscribers have you gotten? I got two. Two? <laughs> two. They're coming in droves. Like, one time I had, like, one, and then I, uh, later on I had another one, I had two. They're, like, leaving comments and stuff, and everybody likes Were they good comments? Uh, no, <laughs> they, they were, but, you know, it's, it's kind of new. Uh, DailyCaller.com Dems suggest kids should be drug tested before they can inherit from their parents. And are they inheriting with drugs? I don't understand. They have to make sure they haven't already taken? Democratic Representative Linda Sanchez offered a baffling defense of the death tax Wednesday during a hearing examining the sometimes unbearable burden it places on family farms and businesses. So I guess like the farmers are like growing mass amounts of like weed and having like a raves and stuff and, and now they like ain't gonna get to get their corn unless they can prove that they're not on anything. And people receiving food stamps have to pass drug tests or meet work requirements to receive taxpayers' dollars. Sam, well, I guess I'll never be on that one. It's only fair that those lucky enough to inherit wealth should have to do something to earn it. So in other words, like, if your family amasses a lot of money and give it to you, Obama's going to say, like, man, that ain't yours, and he ain't going to let you have it. It's basically, they think that you should have to earn it. Like, you know, if I have these sunglasses and I want to give them to my son, they're going to piss test him first. People receiving food stamps. Why you know, again, again. What work requirements are there to inherit a $10 million tax-free ranch? <laughs> I mean, your parents aren't alive anymore. It seems like you're already paid. Why is it that a single mother should be drug tested, which is an unrelated requirement to receive food assistance, to make sure that her family has enough to eat, and people who are lucky enough to inherit millions of dollars are literally required to do nothing? So, of course, you know, the best thing to do is, like, drug test them and make sure they're not like taking anything. How about this? How about if you quit drug testing the people on the food stamps? That <laughs> way the people on the food stamps could be on drugs. And the people that inherit the farm could also be on drugs. That's, that's why you're listening to the correct views, man. <laughs> Sam looks like he's fucking furious. We don't believe in etrocr- I think it's fine. Aristocracy. Or that it's a good societal thing for dynasties. So in other words, all the people that have dynasties and get lots of money must have been on drugs. How many people do they think are going to be on drugs that are inheriting a $10 million ranch? And if you're going to inherit a $10 million ranch, you can buy like a $5 million lawyer. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. <coughs> I'm freaking starved. I don't know why. NigeriaEntertainment.io For those of you that don't want to see me eat, just turn off your monitor. Um, man arrested after calling 911 to report that a wife stole his cocaine. Oh, see, that's crazy. Imagine, you don't want to call the police, because then the police are going to come in and they're going to steal your cocaine. I've had it happen to me so many times. 
The police say a Northeast Ohio man called 911 to report that his wife stole his cocaine and was then arrested himself. In the review newspaper in Alliance, Alliance, <laughs> Alliance is like right up the road. I guess, I guess it's up the road that way. It reports officers responding to the Wednesday night call discovered the man had a marijuana pipe and wanted a warrant for failing to pay hundreds of dollars in a earlier court case. Uh, this is a uh, kind of, it probably looks like one, but no, it's not. It's like a really cool tobacco. Hold on a minute. The man, 39-year-old Robert D. Collins of Lyons, who was charged with two misdemeanor counts alleging improper use of the 911 system <coughs> and possession of drug paraphernalia. Well, I mean, I, I get, improper use of 911. <laughs> you heard it on the correct views first. If somebody steals something from you, don't call 911 because you can go to jail, man. That's, 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 that's what they were trying to say. Hey, um, for some reason, they only give me two shows. So it's like, I guess I'm like skating out of here. But we got the Larry Thorne back next. And uh, I'm going to go, uh, I don't know, watch like Ren and Stimpy or something. I'll see you. Bye. <laughs> Wow, Buddy Buck is, he got his promotion, I, I think he looked decent, all things considered, I mean, how do you think he did? I, I think he did awesome, I, I think he did good. It's questionable, I mean. For being his second show. Well, yeah, but he's got 107 shows on his channel, and he's got, you know, like I said, two subscribers, but I think, I think after this, his show's gonna grow, once they realize that. He's really, really progressing at a very, very rapid pace. Who do we got coming up next? Larry, throw him back. Oh, the driver! Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry, throw him back, the driver. He's going to be doing a posting tonight. Yes. He also uh, helps with driving whenever needed. Oh, he's, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't he? Of course. Larry. <laughs> uh, Larry, come on in. You're up. Hey. You ready, Larry? Uh huh. Hi, I'm Larry Thornback, and uh, I'm here to give you the the sobering report of the world that we live in today. Are you thirsty? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> the man, a 39-year-old Robert. D. Carl, this, this is the wrong story. Buddy left me the wrong, set me, he tried to set me up for failure. He tried to set me up for failure. Oh, that's good. Christina Sarich, Pepsi wins battle to keep adding carcinogens to your soda. And, you know, and it's the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to not have any soda. And if you don't have any soda, you just drink beer. I don't think Pepsi doesn't make any beer. Pepsi won. It's not a beer. And Diet Pepsi has lost the battle against the GMO supporting company PepsiCo. Recently, when a federal judge dismissed the class action lawsuit over the carcinogenic additive additive for me, M E Big I, found within the beverages. I mean. If, if the ingredient looks like an eye chart before they even start, the substance is a byproduct of caramel coloring and it has been proven to cause cancer in multiple scientific, scientific studies. Well, that's easy. The best way to fix this is to quit quit doing any other scientific studies and, and nobody will get cancer. And the Coca-Cola company previously eliminated the chemical from its drinks while Pepsi did not. So I mean, it's still safer to drink beer. I don't think Coke makes beer either. Under California Prop 65, I want you to know I appreciate you dirty. I really love you guys. I appreciate you dirtying him. The substance for me is a prime. I read that. Under California Prop 65, 
This included on a state list of substances that could cause cancer. An arm of the World Health Organization has also classified it as a possible carcinogen. Now that's a stupid damn sentence. It, it says that it could cause cancer and said that it could be a carcinogen. Well, if something is a carcinogen, it already causes cancer, doesn't it? Makes sense to me. And it's just, uh, it might give you cancer, and further studies found that it could give you cancer. Consumer Reports also did a study on the chemical <laughs> and found it well above the healthy levels of many Pepsi drinkers. So I guess the, the overriding lessons we learn here is to make sure that you're not drinking Pepsi, because Pepsi will give you cancer. The best thing you could do if you pick up one is a beer and you don't have any caramel in it and you drink it and you don't have a very hoppy day, Breitbart.com is the last one I'm going to do because it's really, really hard to read. Larry. You're, you're live. <laughs> I want to thank you for, thank you for, thank you for tuning into the correct views. It's from Breitbart. Reports MSM reporters give Hillary Clinton a standing ovation after she takes no questions. Jokes, jokes about email scam. If she, she was standing in front of a bunch of reporters and she didn't ask any questions, what the hell are they clapping for? I don't know. They said she showed up to do a press conference and didn't talk to the press, and they clapped for her. On Monday evening, mainstream media reporters reportedly gave Hillary Clinton a standing ovation after she joked about her private email scandal and took no questions from the press in an event honoring excellence in journalism. According to the National Report, Clinton took no questions in her Johnny Mena speech in Washington, D.C., which prompted the Washington Post Dan Ball, his name is Damn balls. Who won this year's Robin Toner Award for Excellence? He's the best balls of them all. I'm happy to yield my time back to you if you want to take questions. The time reported. Clinton received a standing ovation anyway from the journalist Happy Crowd. So basically, she comes down with the greatest email scandal. Anyway, you know, greatest back where email back in Nick Nixon's day, because you know, Nixon, the guy that wasn't a crook, there was an email. It's the biggest scandal since uh, Whitewater, uh, Watergate, the white water that goes through the gate. And it, it's uh, now that she didn't have to take any questions, and everybody clapped. It. It's really hard for me to understand what they clapped for. But we've only got one one of our ho hosts left. It's uh, it's Larry. Uh, no, no, I know I'm Larry. It's uh, it's Arg, and uh, he's like a pers pers person of more answers. Answers like the phone and stuff. Good, good night, every, good night, everyone. And, uh, 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 Watch the computer. Watch the computer. What's it doing? Uh, buddy, oh, buddy, I spill a beer. Um, Christelle, maybe we might want to refrain from bringing him on to future broadcasts. He seemed like, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but he just didn't seem like himself. Um, he seemed a bit more uh, intoxicated than normal. I don't think he drinks. Well, not usually, Brian, I guess he had something in the day that he spilled it. I don't know. I, all I can say is that the Hillary Clinton thing is really getting out of control because it is the single biggest grievance that has happened. She has. She claimed that she was going ahead and only emailing off of one server, like one, just one account from her phone. They've since found out that she wasn't just doing it from her phone. That she also had an entirely another account. And oh, it's maddening. Just absolutely balls out. Maddening. All right, who is it that we have next? We got we have a couple more stories to get to. Arg Mortis. Arg Mortis. Oh, arg, arg, arg. Why does that sound familiar? Uh, I think that's fine for the uh, lighting. 
Um, oh, 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 ARG! Oh, they do that for ARG, don't they? Yes. Uh, wait, right. For those know. of you that don't know, ARG is the uh, ARG is the public relations manager, and uh, if you call the correct views with any correspondence, then what you will find out immediately is that he will be answering your calls. He will be the one that you speak to on the phone. I've, I've always found him to be a, a rather personable, very agreeable individual, very down to earth. And uh, I don't know. I think Arg is ready for another, another rip roaring performance. What do you say? I, I I would say so. Well, let's see what we got. All right, welcome aboard, Arg. <laughs> Hi. If you call the the correct views. I'll take your phone call. You can ask me anything that you want. Yeah, I'll take your phone call. Brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Sticker Junkie makes great stickers. Okay, StickerJunkie.com. Woman imprisoned in mental hospital for eight days after claiming Obama follows her on Twitter. Guess what? They found out that Obama did follow her on Twitter. It wasn't just in her head. Have any of you ever had people insist that something is all in your head, but you know it happened to this person, it happened to this person, it could happen to you! Stay calm and report on the news. In a truly bizarre case, a woman was recently locked up in the psychiatric ward of Long Island Hospital and forced to undergo medical procedures against her will, <laughs> like electroshock therapy and drugs. And the, 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 <laughs> the drugs, after she told police that the president follows her on Twitter. It turns out that Obama does follow the woman on Twitter. In other words, they locked her up for nothing. Why does Sam always give me these stupid stories? The incident is only coming to light now, but we look past late September. Kim Brock was attempting to retrieve her car from the police after it was impounded. They took her car. They took her car because the president talked to her on Twitter. It doesn't make any sense. In an attempt to convince police that she was a good citizen, Brock told cops at a public service area 6 NYPD station that Obama followed her Twitter account, which was true. However, the cops decided Brock was insane and forcibly committed her to a Harlem hospital. How many times has that happened to you? I, I know I've been the victim a, a, a time or two. Brock's lawyer notes that she was upset, but certainly not emotionally disturbed, as was claimed by the police in their report. What was supposed to be a 72-hour detention actually lasted for eight days. His doctors evaluated her believing that she was delusional and suffering from bipolar disorder. She was there for a long time on Long Island. Medical records presented in court show that Brock was given forced injections of powerful sedatives and oral doses of lithium while being mandated to undergo group therapy. They don't like me in group therapy. They never let me stay. <laughs> Next thing you know, the police held on to me. The doctor struck me, Neo, into my arm, and I was knocked out. As if she told the New York Daily News, she woke up with him taking off her underwear. <laughs> and, and she went out again and woke up the next day in a hospital room. She was asleep, and they were like psychopaths. They were taking her clothes off and filling her with drugs. <laughs> How many times have you wanted to do, do something? <laughs> you know, uh, when the ordeal was over, the hospital forced her to sign a statement saying that she had lied about Obama following her on Twitter. But at no point did anyone, the police or the doctors, actually check her Twitter account to verify the claim, which was true. She's suing them for $13 million. Six thirteen million six hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars and ten cents to be exact. And if I'm not exact, they won't let me do reports. And I like to do reports. CNN reporter bulls to raise money for abortions. This marking outrage. Raising money so that you can take metal items and ram them into the women and pull out the fetus. And you can you know, carve into the child. You can carve into the... I want to go bowling. I want to go bowling. A CNN commentator is bowling to raise money for abortions while mocking critics to call the charity drive disgusting. 
It was so hard to steal an abortion these days. You gotta have charities to get them. And they cut the baby out and they start slicing and slicing. Corn also said she was motivated to bull for abortions because she believes everyone should have access to the abortions they need regardless of how much money they have. You know what I mean? They couldn't afford the condom, so it makes sense that they would have to pay for the abortion. This is Obama's America in action. You can't buy a 99 cent condom, so we'll pay for a thousand dollar procedure. It's fine. I'm bowling to break down barriers of abortion access, Cohen added. I'm lacing up my shoes and polishing my ball to raise money for the local abortion fund, the New York Abortion Access Fund. She's like a hero. There is so much blood gonna be on her hands. And she's like, some, somebody, I don't want, I don't want to talk about it anymore. She, she's like a despicable person. I don't like her. She's, they <laughs> start cutting and cutting. <laughs> uh, two, two more story stories to get. <sighs> One more story to get to. When I heard this story, it made me feel, made me feel alive inside. It made me feel alive. Video, blood stains found atop the Georgia guidestones. From the bawling, uh, uh, uh. the drone footage appears to show bloodstains on the super of the uppermost slab of the iconic Georgia Guidestones, the monumental landmark conspiracy theories, and persons of interest are perplexed by. I am flying my quadcopter above the Georgia Guidestones and found these crazy stains that looked like blood. A man from the website phenomenalplace.com describes. Very intriguing to watch because you don't see any stains on the ground. Some of the blood appears to have dripped onto supporting columns. These stones look completely normal from the ground, but from the top you can see a big splash of this. The man says, I don't know what to make of it, but it does look like blood. Commissioned in 1980 in Herbert County, Georgia, by a person named R. Christensen, a nearly 20-foot-tall stone, which are astronomically assigned, contain ten messages translated into eight different languages, <coughs> including English and ancient Babylonian the most startling inscription, my favorite inscription, I, I like this, I like this inscription, appearing on the monument states, maintain humanity under 500,000, 500 million, excuse me, a thousand would be even smaller, in perpetual proclamation of the underlying New World Mass Eugenics Program. Do you know how many people you'd have to kill? to bring the population of the world down to 500 million people. There are 7 billion people in the world, and they're going to need somebody to start cutting. They're going to need somebody to start cutting. How do you get rid of 7 billion people and take it down to 500 million? You need somebody to, to, to bring the numbers down, and you can call the correct views, and I answer the phone. I, I answer the phone, and I I can, I can you know, see, and I can see if maybe I can, I can be of some service. It says, of course, the population of the world, if it were reduced by this number of general genocide or extermination of the huge majority of the world's 0.5 billion, would have to ensue murders of billions of people, the blood of children and women, men with their heads cut off. Oh, the Georgia Guidestones has blood on it, and they don't know where it's from. <laughs> Made of granite, the Guidestones have a central stone originated astronomically to the sun, aligned with the rising and setting of the fiery orb in the cycle 186 years. Last year, the stones also mysteriously revealed a block inscribed in the numbers 20 and 14, which was later removed and smashed to the ground like a body. 
like a body smashed to the ground. The man in the video questions whether the blood, the blood may have been thrown there by vandals. Could this be some kind of vandalism? Did somebody just throw the cup of, say, chicken blood from cutting a chicken's neck and watching the blood weep from the wound? Did they throw chicken blood from the ground? It's kind of impossible to do because the stones are 20 feet tall. Perhaps someone brought a ladder, he theorizes. If this is the case of vandalism, you would need a ladder to get up there and throw the blood atop. But you cannot do that because they are being watched 24-7, he says, pointing out that a surveillance camera constantly watches the area. That means that if there was a sacrifice, then the authorities would have seen it on the video camera, or they would have shut it off. Either way, they're complicit in the murder of something, of blood. I love to think that the authorities would turn their backs to blood. He finally gave me a good story. Sam finally gave me a good story. Security cameras were added to the installation following a series of vandalistic acts. The man infers that if some of the blood sacrifice ritual took place, it must have happened recently because the blood would have been washed away in recent rains. <laughs> so the authorities shut the cameras off or they were complicit. There's no other way you could get blood on top of the guidestones unless the people that wanted are the guidestones. Sorry, on it. Murder of billions of people. <laughs> the man in first. <laughs> Commentators have suggested that the stain could be anything from a bird's prey leftover to bird droppings <laughs> to red paint. Yeah, because red paint just randomly appears places. There's no mystery if it happens to be just red paint. If you're listening to the correct views, the invisible man, I think, is going to do the ads, and then we are going to sign out. This is Arg Mortis. Call me. Call me at the correct views. I'm their public relations manager, and I will make sure that you are treated with kindness and respect. Thank you, Arg. Wow, that was Arg. Well, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, the Georgia Guidestone mystery with the blood is something. I guess we got the Invisible Man, and he is ready to do the ads, friends. Thank you so much for listening. I mean, genuinely, thank you. Because we don't do these shows a lot. We do them on Halloween, and we do them on April Fool's Day. I want to know which of the characters you like the best. Because I'm going to go ahead and do the characters once again. Uh, before I leave, I'm going to give you the Invisible Man. And he will let you know who the sponsors of the show is. Oh, let me in. Let me in. I need to do my reporting already. Move out of the way. Move out of the way. Hello, friends, and great. I wanted to let you know that the show is brought to you. I can't even focus. I wanted to let you know that the show is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. Now, it isn't a lot of times that you see writers on a show, but we, in fact, have a writer here, and his name is Mike McLaughlin. So, listen to the Invisible Man, look at me when I'm talking to you, and look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. Also, I wanted to most definitely, I want to bloody thank Sticker Junkie and the wonderful chaps. I mean, they are the nicest chaps you will ever meet at Change Transportation. If you are, in fact, stuck somewhere, you're like, where the hell am I going to get out of here? Call Change Transportation, and you will have a ride. Good day.